Hello, today we're going to be looking at some spirometry data. You can see in front of you a lab chart file taken from a student practical where we have the first channel as flow in litres per minute and this is a trace taken from um, the ventilatory measurements using a spirometry pod or another flow device. You can see that expiration is a negative deflection away from the zero line and inspiration is a positive deflection. So we've got positive inspiratory ventilation and negative expiratory ventilation. So these data in themselves are quite interesting to look at and you can clearly see just by tracing across with your mouse that uh, in these three different conditions we've got three different ventilatory rates and three different ventilatory um, flows. Um, but you can't get much out of just staring at the data. So often you'll need to calculate um, the volumes, so you need to uh, integrate these data. Once you've calculated volumes, you can look at the tidal rate. Once you've worked out the tidal rate, you can look at minute ventilation. And you might also want to keep a running average or a running total of the peak flows, both inspired and expired peak flows. So already on this data, um, set there are three other channels that are doing some kind of calculations although when I loaded this on my Mac these data appear to be pretty much around the zero line therefore some of the calculations gone a bit a bit strange so what we're going to do is we're going to recreate some channels to look at um, the calculation of peak flow to start with so peak inspiratory and peak expiratory flow and once we've done that we're then going to look at rate we're then going to look at integrating volume and then calculate minute ventilation. Okay, so let's start by going to the setup and going to the channel settings. And we've got these three channels here, volume, tidal volume, and volume corrected. Well, let's leave volume as it is. Let's leave tidal volume as it is. I'm not quite sure what volume corrected was meant to be. So let's just change this to vent rate. So that's the ventilatory rate. Under here, we're gonna do minute volume and then channel six we'll do max flow, actually you know, let's change that to insp flow and channel 7 we'll do exp flow, okay? So let's just turn on those extra two channels, uh, three channels, there we are. So now we've got a whole load of channels, click OK and you can see we've got some extra channels added here. I could in the uh, channel setups window set up all the calculations using the drop-down list here but I'm going to do it using the drop-down list on the right hand side of each of these um, channel windows in the, in, the, in the main window simply so you can see the data appearing as it happens. So let's zoom in first on the volume and the flow data just move these lines around and we're going to add an integral channel on this uh, channel 2 in order to calculate the volumes of each breath. So we click down on the volume and we go to the integral because that's what we want to do. We are going to do an integral using the flow channel as our source channel because we need to derive the volume from the flow. So we click on flow. The integral type, we only want to calculate the inspired gas flow. So we choose this to a positive only because we know that inspiration is a positive deflection away from the zero line. And the reset type, we're going to reset on each cycle. We don't want to do a timed reset, we don't know what the breathing rate is. A time constant decay isn't really what we're looking at here. And an event, there are no events to reset on. So we're going to reset on each cycle. So as soon as the computer senses that the curve is going the other way, it'll reset that and give us what the maximum volume inspired was. We're not going to put any limits onto it and we're going to leave it down to one decimal place just to make life easy for ourselves. So this is the integral for volume channel, press OK. And now already you can see here that we've got some, I'm just going to zoom in on these lines, you can see volume increasing, if I bring up, bring up a DVM over here, volume starts at zero at the start of inspiration as the person breathes in, it goes up and 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 up to 92 liters per minute second and then bring it all the way back down again. Okay, something you'll notice here, this is a, a cunning uh, ploy by lab chart to confuse you, you'll notice that your uh, flow is in liters per minute. Okay, your volume is in liters per minute seconds. So the software is calculating an integral over seconds in time, 
not in minutes in time. So we will need to correct this volume. So I now know what that corrected volume was. We will need to divide this by 60 in order to give us the correct number. Because this is in litres per minute per second, or minute times seconds, and we need to then multiply, divide it, sorry, by 60 to bring it down to the correct number. So if we double click on the line across the middle, We've then got another calculation to do, so I'm going to add another channel. These channels are going to end up in a very strange order, but that doesn't really matter. And channel 8 will now be, very simply, an arithmetic channel where I'm going to choose channel number 2 and I am going to divide it by 60. Press OK. So there we are now. This data down the bottom here, if I hold up the cursor, this is now in litres. Okay, not litres per minute second. This is now the correct number. So this is the tidal volumes here, which is great. So now we can uh, hide away that window. Now we've done the calculation from it. Uh, in an ideal world, we'd have this channel underneath the other channel, but that doesn't really matter. So now look at tidal volume. What is tidal volume? Tidal volume is each of these as a running total, isn't it? So it's looking at different cyclic variations. So tidal volume is very easy. We're going to do a cyclic measurement from channel number 8, choosing the maximum peaks. So it's going to do a peak-to-peak -peak step plot. So we choose cyclic measurements. We choose channel 8, which we'll rename in a minute. We're going to choose the peaks, so the maximum. We're going to well, we can't choose a drop-down off this because no, we're not actually measuring any of this. But if we choose airflow, you'll probably find, yes, it chooses the peaks quite nicely. So we're going to choose airflow and just play with the detection slightly to make sure it fits the data we've got. Yep, that looks pretty good. There's a few glitches, but that looks... No, no, that's pretty good. So then I'm going to press OK. Uh, decimal place is 1. Let's not be uh, silly about this. No, 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 no. Yep. And now we've got these data which are the peak-to-peak -peak volumes. And if I bring up another DVM window, let's lose him, bring up this DVM window, you can see if you look at the pink line down the bottom here and compare that, drag that window up, and compare that to the orange line where there's a peak, you can see there's a little peak here that drops down, you can see there's a peak here which then drops down. There's a big spike up here there it is, and let's see it spikes up here. So you can see that this is tracking breath by breath tidal volumes. So that's very useful to have too. So uh, we said we're going to work out ventilatory rate and minute volume from these data too. So let's choose ventilatory rate, let's choose a cyclic measurement, and we're going to measure the peaks of each of these inspiratory flows at the top. So choose cyclic measurements. We're going to use flow. We're going to measure rate. We're going to get rid of decimal places to one decimal, not decimal places. We're going to choose a respiratory airflow as our trace, and you can see that it's found all of our peaks quite nicely. There is breaks in the data set, and you saw a little error message coming up before. It'll say the data are discontinuous. That's absolutely fine. Just press OK, and it'll say here the peak search window should be larger than the maximum. Yes, fine. Just press continue. And now we have the ventilatory rate. If you don't trust these data, have a look at the peak-peak differences in here by simply measuring the time between each peak and you'll see that they probably do work out quite well. And you can see here the ventilatory rate, if I drag this across, is saying 18, 13, 15, 13, 16, 18, 12 breaths per minute, which is brilliant. So we're happy with that. Now, minute ventilation. Minute ventilation is quite simply the breath ventilation integrated with the rate. So if we multiply the rate by the breaths, you'll work out what the minute ventilation is. Because the rate is in breaths per minute, and what we've got in our tidal volume trace is each breath times one by the other. It'll tell you that if the character continued breathing at exactly that rate, at exactly that volume on every breath, that would be their minute ventilation. So this will calculate minute ventilation on a breath by breath basis. So let's choose minute ventilation. It's going to be an arithmetic channel a mathematical formula multiplying ventilatory rate by tidal volume. So we choose arithmetic, we choose channels, which is channel number three, and we're going to multiply that by channel number four. 
Unfortunately, the Mac version, these drop-down boxes don't actually have the name of the channels in them. A bit frustrating. I think in the PC version they may well appear, but I wouldn't worry about it. You've got the, you've got the, the channels listed down the side here. So it's channel 3 times channel 4. I'll give it one decimal place and press OK. And there we are. This is now a minute ventilation on a breath-by-breath -breath basis. How you use these data is up to you, but you can see we've got a minute ventilation of 37 litres, 30 litres, 35 litres, 31 litres. 35 litres. Great. Um, the, the subject is doing exercise, I believe, during this time, and we'd hope, well, we'll look at the full data set in a minute, so let's, let's turn that off and turn that off. So our final two data sets we want to calculate from this original flow data, bear in mind what we've been doing up until this point, is uh, modifying derived data from the flow data, but now we're going to look at the raw flow data and we're going to look at the peaks and the troughs of this raw data and plot them as two separate lines showing maximum inspiratory flow and maximum expiratory flow. So we can drop down the list on inspiratory flow, choose cyclic measurements because this is a cyclic measurement. We want to go from the flow channel and we want to choose the maximum and we want to choose it as an airflow trace and then we just make sure we've picked up all the peaks which we have and press OK. Uh, same same question again. And then we just have a quick look see. So there's a little spike over here and that's picked up by a little spike here. That's great. Let's have a look further across the trace. There's a let's have a look further down the line. Yep, there's a little peak there which is reflected in a peak. Yep. That all looks good to me. There's some yep, some lumps and bumps that are increasing. So that's absolutely fine. Yep, that looks good to me. So then we're going to create the second channel, expiratory flow. We're going to go to a cyclic measurement again. We're going to choose flow. We're going to choose minimum now because we're looking at the minimum peak. We're going to use the airflow as our detection settings and then just make sure that we can see all the spikes. That's great. And press OK. So let's just have a little look at those data. Let's just scale them so we can see them all. And there we are. So here are our data. The best thing to do at this point is to zoom right out and look at the data in general. And you can see here that the, the maximum flow seems to just pootle around at about 50. And you can see here, if I just bring up the window, it's pootling. Let's get rid of those decimal places. That's just, just madness, isn't it? Um, let me just get rid of those decimal places here. There we go. So you can see it's pootling around 50, and you can see up here it says about 50. And you can see here these peaks, I'm holding my mouse over, seem to go up to around 100, and lo and behold they're going up to around about 100, and then they go a little bit higher, and yes, they're going a little bit higher, which is great. So that seems to fit with the data we can see on the screen. And how about expiratory flow? We think it's going to be um, around about, let's just change those decimal places again, I forgot to do that earlier. Um, who likes four decimal places? Not me. So let's just drop a DVM window down here and we're expecting it to be around about minus 75 which is what we see minus 50 which is great down here we're expecting it to be about minus 100 which it is and then down here we're looking at peaks at about minus 150 which it is so those are all your data if I then double click on here you can see the entire data set you can see that um, inspiratory volume seems to peak up as the time passes and as the different protocols are applied. You can see the tidal volume tracks this as it goes up and up and up and up. Ventilatory rate doesn't seem to change very much, which is interesting. But if I zoom right in on that, at the moment you see it's going up to 300 breaths a minute, which is just madness. You're not going to measure that. So let's just bring that up into a scale we can actually see. There we go. And you can see actually that ventilatory rate goes up a little tiny bit. Um, we've got it at 18, 13, 14, 14, 15, 18, 17, 22, 20, whatever. So it does go up a little bit and the consequence of that is that minute volume also increases. You can see minute volume starts off, again let's bring up a DVM window, starts off around 18, 15, 20, peaks up to about 35 and then peaks up to about 39. So you can see in this case minute volume seems to be determined mostly by the inspired volume not by the rate which is great. Uh, inspiratory flow and expiratory flow we've looked at and channel 8 is our cleverly derived mathematical channel which converts our litres per minute seconds into uh, litres.
So I hope that uh, answers all the questions. It's quite a rather a long and rambling tutorial, but does show the derivation of all these data from a single flow trace. Um, how you use this data is up to you. You can either bin it, of course, if you think it's a, a constant and there's no plateaus involved, you could bin every five seconds or whatever, and you could ask lab chart then to, to bin those data and average them and work out um, variation, standard deviations or whatever. Or you could choose instantaneous breath by breath data simply by just using each of the breaths as a data point. But hopefully that'll help uh, do some analysis.